So on this channel, I've talked a lot about video editors like Caden Live or uh, using Blender for graphics and stuff like that. GIMP, a lot of creative artistic tools that I really like using. But today I want to touch on something a bit different, something that a lot of you may never need to use, but it doesn't make it any less awesome. And today I'm going to talk about, oops, <laughs> today I'm going to talk about DCP Omatic. Now, for those who don't know, if you ever go to a movie theater and you go up the staircase, some in the back, up to the projector room, chances are you're going to see one of two things in the modern era. You're either going to see a 35 millimeter film projector, which is becoming more and more rare, like you probably know they have a projector because they probably advertise like we still do the full thing because it's become a bit of a, of, of a niche in the industry. But the majority of them are DCP um, projectors. Now, DCP is a standard. And the idea is that when you watch a movie in the theater, you get a MJPEG uh, 2K format in the YUV color space, very, very good color. Um, and it's projected uh, through a proprietary, usually Red Hat based uh, projector. So the video file is MJPEG 2000, and I believe the audio file is just uncompressed PCM. And that even includes like surround sound mixes and whatnot. And because of the simplicity of the format, obviously people wanted to make free software that would run on any platform to build those DCPs. So I just kind of rambled into a rough about understanding of what it is, but here we go. Let's go through the page here. They just did a website redesign. It looks fantastic. Get any content cinema ready, convert video, audio, subtitles into DCP in development for nine years. This is correct. I've been using, um, it was called something else before that. This is actually a fork called DCP Omatic. I think it was called Open DCP or something like that. But um, you can put your film on the big screen, prepare your film for festivals, premieres, and digital cinema. A lot of people don't know this, but some of the larger film festivals still want your short film. Even if you're just a filmmaker like you and I, they still want those films in a DCP format. Granted, in 2021, a short film can easily fit in a $19 thumb drive. But for the longest time, you'd actually have to acquire a SATA mechanical hard drive to handle these movies. Um, from my time working in a movie theater and a little research I've done online, also, the average 2K movie is around 300 to 500 megabytes, about half a terabyte. But short films, commercials, and things like that that run before the movie, a lot of those that are just, you know, loaded up in a playlist on the projector, um, a lot of those are small enough. Again, uh, I, we had some commercials that came in on DVD-Rs. Um, make adverts for your cinema. DC, um, DCP Omatic is used in smaller cinemas, and they can actually display those, like, you know, go to our concession, check out our local whatever events. Um, they can make those video files, drop them in the DCP player's timeline, just like everything else, and go to town. Transform your film festival. Submissions arriving in Blu-ray, USB, download. Get them all ready to play. I've even... I use this to convert uh, YouTube videos for the cinema. It's fun. Avoid optical uh, media. So let's dive into getting started. So we gotta, we gotta. There's a lot of things we gotta understand about how this works. <laughs> uh, it's detecting that I have Ubuntu, even though this is a Debian system. You can get it. You install it. Start a new project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Let's let's. That was not actually the link I wanted to go. Learn more. Let's learn more about digital, digital cinema packages. Again, if you're not interested in this kind of thing, this video is not for you, and I get that. But for those of you who are still watching, you guys are probably like, wow, this is neat. Virtually every cinema in the world now is digital. True. Very, very true. While some cinemas have a display option for Blu-ray, the theater I worked at actually had a Sony Blu-ray player to work with their Sony uh, sound system. Our DCPs were made by somebody else, but our sound system was Sony. So the easiest way to get the discs, DVDs, and uh, Blu-rays to play in the theater, because uh, our the guy who ran the theater company thought of this, um, he found that the Sony 
uh, Blu-ray players and the Sony sound system work really good together. Uh, other consumer projects, there's only one file file format that's guaranteed to work in, that's the digital cinema package. If you want your film, trailer, or effort play with the least effort and the best quality, make a DCB. Because it uses the MJPEG 2000 codec, which I think is technically an open standard now because it's so old, no one uses it, but it's old, but it takes a lot of muscle to compress. In fact, that's one of the downsides of this thing. It's, it's very slow. That was a phone call. I have no idea if the light changed, but it was worth it because it was a good phone call. I was talking about DCPs, wasn't I? Well, let's just go forward. What is a DCP? It's a collection of files. I, I actually have made a DCP. I made one while I was working, even though it's an incredibly slow process. Um, made my last YouTube video, possibly my last YouTube video that I made. A DCP bike. Aha, here it is. So... Here's what the DCP looks like. It's a bunch of XML files, and then this M MXF file format. I can't remember much about the file format itself. Material exchange format. And inside, you can see there's the MJPEG 2000. And yeah, this is just a raw PCM files. So it says surround sound, but it's actually just upmix from stereo. So let's uh let's actually let's open this up. View all applications, Audacity, and it'll, it'll open up, right? It'll open up. It opened right the fuck up, yeah. And here's a crash course in surround sound. Wow, that that's that's a lot. But if you listen to this, it's just like music from my video. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now the video format being MJPEG. Okay, I don't know if you can see from the thumbnail. Can I make the thumbnail bigger? Let's see. Uh, make thumbnail bigger. Oh, that's about as big as it gets. The color looks weird in the preview because on the fly converting from XYZ color space to RGB makes everything kind of this backwards gray thing. But I believe um, MPV, my default player for most things, I think it converts it to RGB on the fly. So it looks normal on the playback. No, I know it's, it's still weird. So depending on your player and how smart your player is, it might get this backwards. As you can see, the frame rates are looking very small. It doesn't look terrible. It just looks like the blue colors are off a little bit. But let me, let me make this big. You can see there's almost no pixelization here. Like even with colors like MJPEG and X264 and all those codecs, they have a hard time with red. And XYGB, XYZ, XYZ color space handles things like the red colors much more elegantly. So first thing we're going to do real quick is I'm going to actually, I'm going to launch this thing. Get out of my thing. Um, local DCP. I had to install the flat packs. Cause there's a compatibility with a missing library and Debian unstable. So there's that, um, DCP. I'm going to play with the player first. We're gonna do the player. This is the player, and the player is not designed for the, the projectors, but it's designed to let you see if your DCP is working properly. So here you go, open that one. That's the one I just loaded a second ago. This will convert the color space properly on the fly. However, because I have a um, quad core uh, mobile chip, a Series 8 Intel, it needs a little extra work, so I'm decoding at quarter resolution. But as you can see, it plays nice. It plays fine. I could skip ahead. In my opinion, the best bicycle. Yeah. So this is a good way to test out if your DCPs are going to work. If you go to full, full resolution, you're gonna see it's gonna fail. Oh, it is making my webcam angry. So we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna do that one. Mm -mm, no, no, sir. Uh, I'm close that. I'm gonna close that. Well, let's go into making a DCP. What does it take? What does it take to make a DCP? Well, it takes a lot of muscle. But there's some really interesting things you do here. There's two views. There's the complicated view, and then there's the simple view. I have the simple view out there because other than when I need to really tweak something, um, the simple view works. Simple view works. So I'm going to actually open the project I just did, the one you just saw. You can save the projects and preview play. It's actually playing the 
the video file, not the DCP. So it's like you can preview it before it's done, make sure it's going to work for you. I've made a, a, I've Which is nice. It gives you some content data. This is at 1920 by 1080. Now, the DCP image formats are probably not what you're expecting. There's two formats. There's DCI flat, DCI scope, and then this thing called full frame, which is actually not supported on all projectors. So flat is kind of very similar. It's 1998 by 1080. And that's kind of the closest, you can see there's got the pillars here on the sides. That's closest to the 1080p standard that you are used to. However, if you watch a lot of movies that have that super widescreen look, that's gonna be DCI scope. That's 2048 by 5, 858. This is a this is a cool one. Like I'm gonna actually do the tool to convert this, even though you know. Um scale to fit with, boom. Zoom me in a little bit. Doesn't look bad, looks pretty cinematic, but it's not what I plan these shots for. And you know, if you if you do it this way, it does a pretty good job. The encoding also I want to say is like a, like that little difference between in the height makes a huge difference in your coding times, especially when you have a computer like mine that does about two to three frames per second. It's very slow. Um, but yeah, um, that's how you make it. But there's more to it than that because you can also do batch con uh, conversions, but you can also connect to a server. Let's actually go back to the DCP website. I'm gonna go to the download page so you can see. So I'm rocking the app images. The app images are split up into the different tools. If you install the package, obviously it includes all those tools. We have the, the encoder, the player, KDM creator. That has to do with the encryption. So you can actually send um, the files encrypted. Movie theaters actually send the DCPs encrypted and then right before it's time for them to go live at the theater, the theater sent an unlock key that I believe unlocks it for a window of time. Um, the encode server. Now the encode server, this is interesting. The encode server, if you have two or three computers in your house, you can just launch the encode server or boot to a live image of the of a, it's like a Debian distro with a DCP o -matic, and you can connect the server. So if you have like, let's say you have like, like I have a pile of laptops over here. I could just boot every single laptop I have in this pile, connect to the same network, and they can all work together to encode these raw frames with raw CPU power. Um, and I have some theories about cloud encoding, but I have not dived into that yet. Batch converter, I think it handles the playlists and stuff. And then, oh, sorry, playlist center. Batch converter, I don't know what batch converter does. Never came up, never came up for me. Um, but yeah, DCP o -matic. You can, uh, in, you know, you shoot your movie, you edit in Caden Live, master some audio with our door, do your little special effects with Blender, and when you're all done, you use DCP O Matic to make the digital cinema package. You put it on a little, you know, 256 gigabyte SSD, and you send it to your uh, your local movie theater, and they can play that format, and it'll look and sound amazing on the big screen. So that's DCP Omatic. Um, link down below. And if you guys are interested in me covering DCP Omatic things moving forward, let me know and I will I will try to cover more of this. And before I go, I want to thank my uh Patreon supporters. They're no, that side. They're that side. Yes. There's those cool cats right there, um, who have been very supportive and without their contributions. I would not be able to make these videos. I would not be able to geek out about DCP Omatic and other things. But anyways, if you like what I'm doing, hit subscribe and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.